and I'll allow, get everyone an opportunity to, to grab a chair in our virtual room here as we're really excited um, to dive into, you know, with our next speaker to this topic. So I want to give everyone a moment. Uh, this is Lee Klein. Uh, happy to host here on behalf of Coaches Clinic and Basketball Immersion. Appreciate uh, everyone who's carved out a little bit of their night to spend with us. And uh, like I said, really excited to talk uh, talk some defense, some zone defense with uh, Brian Gates of the Minnesota Timberwolves. And like I said, really excited to to get into uh, to get into this. And um, coach, take us away. Okay, thanks. Um, well, I'm, I, if anybody's kind of staying on these all night or kind of. Uh, watching Scott Morrison so the, and then mine it's a lot you know a little interesting he just did zone offense and uh and I'm going to do zone defense and kind of a funny part is I watched his and and sent him a text and like you can't use the Timberwolves zone defensive clips as good defense and this is what don't let you what you don't want to do because I have the exact same clip so we're gonna we're just gonna kind of roll from there so second um uh, if we have any interruptions, I know Jen Boucher did hers yesterday morning and her daughter walked in, but uh, I have uh, nine-year-old triplets. And so. Uh, so that's why you do zone. That's why yeah. you're, you're on yeah. zone defense because yeah. you're constantly playing yeah. zone. My wife and I are uh, two on three zone, but uh, uh, one of them really likes to come in when I'm on a Zoom call, check who's out on here. If, uh, if Carl Anthony Towns or Josh Koji or D'Angelo or James Johnson, he will stay. If those guys are not there, Jake Lehman, he will stay for. If there's any other coaches out there that aren't as cool, he will probably just walk through, look, and leave. So that's just where we're at. But with all that being said, we're just going to kind of dive into this thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen now. Um, I kind of have a kind of the same format um, that a lot of people have here. Um, and just uh, I have a... I have some some notes, uh, zone concepts, and that's my email address. It's it always obviously loves to capitalize, but it's a little b, and it doesn't really matter. If you have any questions or, or want to continue visiting or have a question about a clip that has some conversation behind it, uh, that's a way to get a hold of me. I'm pretty good at email. Um, or if you want these notes, just send me uh, a message saying, "Hey, can you send me uh, the outline of this?" So just kind of going to go through this and, and, and then have some video that we'll talk through. Um, I also would like to, if you have a question during this, and Lee, I think you can handle this, just kind of put your question in the chat and, um, and we'll just dive into it. I'll, I'll stop what I'm doing and, and, um, and, and try to answer your questions. I, I always kind of think one of these situations is, is if you're thinking something that um, probably somebody else is thinking the same thing. Um, so here we go. Um, you know, everybody always says, why run zone? Um, and um, I'm going to tell you kind of my defensive philosophy real quick. And I, and I have it down here a little bit. Um, you, uh, you can't catch every raindrop. And, you know, in defense, you've never seen a score that's zero to zero. And, you know, I, I, always, I always believe that anytime you're in a coach's meeting or something, and if you have a defensive guy or somebody scout or if you're talking, the offense usually holds the pen last and wins. Well, if you do this, I'm going to do this. Well, if you do this, I'm going to do this. So, you know, for me, playing zone is just a, is, is a different uh, is a different technique. Um, you know, and 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 I I believe that you know again here you can't catch every raindrop. You know, and if you're not going to make it confusing, if you just want to run zone zone all the time, you know, you know, get on YouTube or go see a coach Beheim. Uh, clinic somewhere and, and he can do a much better job than anybody else can because obviously with, with so much of their success. So, so here we go. Um, you know, why run zone? You know, I think the biggest part is, and um, I'm going to kind of refer to Scott a little bit. Um, if you haven't watched his, uh, you know, Scott's a very smart basketball coach, good communicator, good teacher. Um, you know, we've kind of had the same pass, uh, a lot of respect for Scott. Um, and he kept talking about, you know, speeding the team up and, and he gave some analytics that I was going to also use is, you know, if you're shooting the ball with 10 seconds in the shot clock, you know, you, your shot value is going to be down regardless if you're in zone or man, you know, if you can be always on the attack mode, that's, that's what you want. And, you know, a big reason why teams run zone is, 
is you can slow down the tempo, you know, tempo control, you know, make them think, you know, if, if you, uh, if a team's coming at you and you drop back in a zone or even out of a timeout and they stop and pull everything back, you know, you, you've kind of won the first round, you know, the first round of that possession uh, of the fight. And obviously as, as the shot clock goes on, your point for possessions go down. Okay. A big thing that I really like about a zone is if, if, if I think my team's not talking, you know, you're, you know, you know, when you're playing in the, or maybe the arena is quiet, your guys are just not communicating really well, just kind of drop back into zone, you know, call your zone play and, and get them to communicate. Uh, I've been in a lot of situations where um, I've seen teams that have never ran zone before just drop back in a zone and, and the coaches will say, I just wanted my team to talk a little bit. And I, I always think that's, that's a good reason. And then again, you know, if you have some, if you have a group of bad defenders out on the floor and you, and you need to hide them a little bit, I think Scott talked about that a little bit in, in some of his clips. Um, you know, you can do that. Or if you have bad matchups, a lot of teams that want to play big or small and, and they're going against the other way. You know, if, if you even want to play two bigs, you can play a one, two, two zone, um, you know, and, and, and try to get out to the three point line. Your bigs are going to have, just have to get to the corners instead of being out on top. Um, or, you know, even if you're small and, and, and you're struggling, you know, you, you, you can just drop back in your zone and really extend your zone, get it up the floor and make the offense use, use a lot more space. And then again, a lot of people don't know this, but when you're, when you're getting beat in the paint, you could pack the zone or even sometimes even if, if you want to guard the three point line, you can, you can extend your zone again and, and, and protect the three point line. Or if you want to stop a play there, there's been times uh, where, you know, especially late in the game where a team comes and calls a play and, and, and we're not that confident. You can kind of see it in your players' eyes that something, some actions are going to happen. We, we don't know what's going to happen. We'll just yell zone and just, you know, jump in our zone. And just so we stop and try to see everything. And, th and then we can react and try to, again, get them to, to change the play. And then one of the big things that I, I think teams run zone for, and this is happening more and more in the NBA and just in overall basketball, it's actually to get your transition going. If, a lot of teams that switch, you know, Golden State, um, at their pace, they play so fast when, when everybody's healthy for them. They switch a lot of things, so they're never staying in their matchups. And you can do that in a zone, too. I thought Miami did a good job in this in, in the playoffs. You know, they, they might have been a little undersized, so, so they got in their zone, got their zone up the floor, and then, you know, make or miss, they were just coming at you, and you could kind of see the, you know, in the transition – from from their opponents from offense to defense they were struggling trying to find guys and, and their, their shooters got loose a few times and you could tell that that was an issue and, and that's a real hard thing to prep for I mean you're you're you know the Lakers are such of a dominant offensive rebounding team and you, you know you got to start talking about getting back against a zone that is really starting to push it up so I, I think that is kind of a new new age of, of what teams want to do you know get that transition uh, team go, transition offense going a little bit and then two other things that I think, um, you know, if your team or a player is in, in a little bit of foul trouble, you, you can always run a zone. Uh, we did that um, in the minor leagues for a, a lot of, if, if we were down some guys and some guys got in foul trouble, you know, a guy got called up, obviously you have a, a little more limited roster in, in the minor leagues. Uh, we, we would try to protect them a little bit. Or if, if, you know, we got in the bonus early and we needed to stop fouling. Now we don't want to not be aggressive but we just kind of want to change the pace of the game and, and, and try to get, uh, you know, keep them off the free throw line. Okay. And then another thing, you know, teams that want to shoot quick um, is sometimes it's, it is good to play zone because they will take the first available shot. And then I said this earlier, and I'm a big believer in this and just not in, in all assets. You, you can't catch every raindrop, uh, you know, zones, you cut the paint or you cut the three point line. You're not going to be able to catch them both. I mean, you know, you're going to give up a three. And sometimes if you're in a zone, you, you hit one three and teams will get out of it. And, and, and a lot of offenses, you know, if you move the ball two or three times and get a good three, if they're not really used to playing zone, they'll get out of it. And you, you, my big thing is you cannot make it too confusing. Or again, what I said, be, be Syracuse. You know, you can't have very many rules. Um, I have just some unique different rules that I have. And, and some people want to send the ball a different way. That's, you know, for you, you to coach your team your way. But, um, but again, I, I, think, I think your basis of your rules are, and then you try to, you know, milk that shot clock. And even what Scott said is, you know, when you're, when you're constant and, and you don't gamble and, 
you still guard the ball, which I think is such a big part of it. Um, you know, you can get that points per possession pretty low. So, and you're going to give up some rebounding. It is what it is. Cutters are going to get on the inside of you. You're going to cut and try to pass off a cutter and they're going to be between you and the basket. And when the ball's on one side, you know, your weak side is just going to be in more because you are in a zone and they're going to shoot it and, and they can crash. And, and it just, it is what it is. Again, you can't catch every raindrop on this situation. So couple, here, couple just quick, some, yeah. here, a couple, couple of quick questions yep. so just to give some perspective. How, you know, over a course season, like what percentage would you play zone in a, over the course of a season? Are we talking really, uh, you know, a sprinkle, a sprinkle into a game here? Is it a couple possessions? Yeah. I mean, I, 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 to be honest with you, I think that's, I think it always determines how the game's going. Um, I think if you see some, if you have a good feel of the, of the other team, um, how they're playing at the time, um, you know, I, I like to sprinkle it throughout the game, you know, an ATO that they like, especially um, when, a, when a backup point guard or when they change a point guard and they're coming out of a timeout, you know, jumping into a zone, you, you might have a cold ball handler and shooter out on the floor that he might try to, you know, to, to again, pause the game. It's, I, Scott showed it. There's so many times where guards come down and they see zone. And then they just back up and they really allow you to set your defense. And, you know, again, I think you win that round when, of that possession when, when that happens. But and, and then if it starts working, it's, you know, it's, it's just like everything else. I, I do know there's those teams that want to play, you know, 30 possessions a zone a game. Um, I, don't, I don't really have for me personally. I think it's a, it's a feel thing and you're always working on it. You're always you know, you're all, always ready for it. I think there's some teams out there that, that, that got really good at it. Um, I know Toronto did, but I think Toronto is such of a support and aggressive defensive team anyway. It always feels like they're in zone. I, I, they led the league in, in uh, you know, points off turnovers or however, you know, they're one or two in, in that area. And that, you know, their defense ignited their offense. And, and again, I think I, I mentioned that here as much as um, – as much as uh, Miami did, that's one of the, the benefits of, of Toronto. They get a lot of deflections. So uh, I'm, I'm always ready to roll that out there in a, in a game. So last quick thing before yeah. we get into the rules, the um, you, you mentioned like getting out of it, right? So like someone hits a three, is there a certain discipline? Like we're going to stay with it or the second that there's a negative uh, you know, something negative happens that we abandon it. Uh, I think, I think the big answer is why did you get in at the first place? If you're going to play five possessions, no, you're still going to play five possessions and, and see how it goes. Um, you know, there, there are some teams, that, you know, it, and also who hits that three, um, you know, if you're playing Sacramento and Buddy Heald hits the three or, um, you know, you're playing Golden State and, and Steph or Clay hit a three, that's one thing, but maybe a non-shooter or, or a, you know, whatever your line is at a 32% three-point shooter and lower hits one, then I, I think you're okay. Or if there's a mistake that you know that that you missed is you're going to cover, you know, that that's good. There's some teams out there in the NBA that, that you know, as you scout, hey, we're going to run 30 possessions a zone and they're going to run the wheel. And so that we're going to walk through the wheel and, and, and whatever our rules in Minnesota is we always try to have a we still try to play in a man-to-man -man situation. So we have bodies on bodies and we walk through the wheel. So I think that's one part of it, you know, to answer the, the question in a whole, I think is you're getting into a zone for a reason and you have to support that reason throughout the game and, and your game plan. So uh, some teams, yeah. I mean, I, I think some teams, you know, I've, I've seen teams, you know, zone Houston a little bit with a one, two, two, just to, make James see everybody because they're going to be five out anyway. So, um, yeah, I think, I think it's a scouting and it, and, and it's a, a, you know, each coach is different. If you were to ask me, I'm always going to sprinkle in it. I always like to zone an ATO. Um, I also like to zone a sideline out of bounds where you have everything in front of you and, you know, you can defend at a 14 second shot clock. You can defend the first, six seconds and keep everything in front of you and keep your smalls away from the basket and your bigs at the basket. And then you can match up it if you need to, if it, if it gets lower in the shot clock, again, where the points per possession goes lower. Uh, very, very well. Awesome. 
Okay. So the the big part, and I think Toronto probably does this probably one of the best in the league is hands out. They have their hands above the hips and you got to talk. I mean, it's, it's the cardinal rule of zone equals communication, you know, and, and, and uh, if you have your hands above the hips, um, there's a great story in, um, in USA basketball when Coach K uh, took over. I think he had LeBron, Kobe, Kevin Durant, uh, Tyson Chandler, and I'm sorry if I, I can't f- remember the fifth one, but he put them out, all out on the floor, and, and he had the entire team and doctors and everybody stand in front of him, and he just made all those guys stand and put their hands out. And they're like, oh, you know, could you just imagine coming down and looking at LeBron, Kobe, KD, and Tyson Chandler at the at the at the rim, and you know, okay, put your arms out. Holy cow, this is even bigger. Now move. And I think you know, just putting your hands out. You put your hands out, you're going to get deflections. It just it's the it's the big it's the biggest part of your zone, and, and more importantly, just in defense in general and addressing the ball. I, th- I think this happens a lot. I, I think. Uh, you know, player, you know, the player on the ball still has to be man to man. You still have to guard the ball. I mean, you just, you still have to bear down and, and can't rely on completely getting beat and allowing straight line drives because it just compounds. You know, you, when you start giving up multiple paint, paint touches in a zone with cuts and or, you know, especially with the drive, you're going to be, you're going to be in trouble. And you have to call the ball. Each pass has a, you have to say, ball, I'm here. And then if you ever want to bump somebody or move somebody to get out and regardless, you have to honor the command. If somebody tells you to move, you move. If somebody tells you to take a cutter, you take a cutter. And then um, I'm, I'm going to get to this in a minute here. Um, if, if you just say match up, which I'm a big believer in, you know, you honor the command, you find a man and, and, and you, you fight the next round. You know, I, I've kind of said this term a, a couple of times. If you can win some rounds in a possession, you can w- win the first six to seven seconds of a round. Of, of a possession, you know, you, your points for possession is going to go down. You keep everything in front of you, and now, and now they're going to just start fighting the shot clock. Somebody's going to put their head down and, and, and probably to make a mistake in a turnover. So um, just those three things, you, you know, you, ha- you still have to guard the ball, honor the command. And then number three is, in my opinion, you always, each player in the zone, you have to have a man or, you, you know, the ball can always catch up. And they're going to find the empty man. So the communication, and I think that starts with the communication. I'm here, I'm here. And you start getting your hands out and pointing and moving guys and touching guys to, to push them away to do another man. I think you're going to be, um, you're going to have some success. And when I'm talking about a man, okay, what man is mine? And, and the big thing is who am I closing out to? If this guy catches it, that's my closeout or obviously rebound, rebound box or tag or however you want to, whatever terminology you use to, to, if, you, if you're a box out team or a tag team. But the question you always ask yourself in a zone is, who, what guy do I have to close to? And the middle has the middle. The, the middle guy in, in, the, um, in the zone always has the middle guy. And um, you know, it keeps him to the paint. It keeps him, you know, in the NBA, we have a 2.9 rule. The middle guy has the middle. He can touch him. He's cleansed for another 2.9. And then another thing for me, pick and roll coverages or pick and roll coverages. They are what they are. If you're in a drop, you're in a drop. If you're in a blue or you push something to a side, if everybody has a man in their area, the big has the big, and you just honor your pick and roll, your coverages. Again, I'm going to go back up to this. Let's not make this thing too confusing. You know, let's just, let's take out all the what ifs and not create them. Okay. And then a, a, a big thing you have to do, you have to be a great stunt team or low team. You're in a zone for a reason because you're supporting each other even more. You're not in a man-to-man. You're not denying anybody the ball. You're in a load and help um, situation. If you can be a good stunt team, you can actually go from the ball to the ball, and which, which is very hard to do. If I'm guarding the ball, my, my man in the zone, and they throw it to somebody else, and he happened to be not guarded, you can stunt for him and get back out. But what, what you really have to have is you have to have zero straight line passes. I'm going to show you a couple of clips in here where the ball kind of, you can see it move and it, it, it's a bounce pass or it's a hang time pass. Okay. Everybody plays or tags the cutters. We play zone and it's just, it's like you're in the backyard, play tag, touch, you know, you're out here. If, if, a ta- if somebody cuts through the basket, you tag on them and you play basketball know where the cutters are coming and say where they're going. I got this guy. I got this guy. He's going here. He's yours. And again, I just talked about this NBA, you cleanse yourself. Okay. And two things, 
cannot like you can't what if everything like well what if he does this what if he does this what if he does this <clears throat> hey that's it is what it is i mean then just yell man and and i'm a, I'm a big proponent of, if you're in trouble just yell man okay cutters to an overload side everybody runs the baseline if that happens and you're passing somebody off to a op completely open area go with them and yell match up and you're good and i'm going to reiterate this i have it in here twice Pick and roll coverages or pick and roll coverages. All right. Okay. And gambling at the end is an open three. So I'm just going to show some clips here. Quick question before we yep. get to, to the clips. Uh, there's a question here from a coach asking if this is based on the Flip Saunders one, two, two defense. Yeah. 50, a little, a little bit of it. Yeah. We, we played obviously with, with Ryan Saunders. Um, his son is our coach. We're playing with a little bit more. With all this quarantine and, and and time we've had off, we've we've talked about everything, and and uh, I think some of the best zones you're going to see it right here as you're up the floor, and you know let's just kind of run this here. You're going to see a shot clock here, 18, 17. I know Scott Morrison talked about this, but again, I want you to look at these passes. All right, okay. There's a bounce pass. You see where Bridges, he gets the ball. He has nowhere to go. He's pivoting. There's a hang time pass where he has to jump and takes him out. Now the ball's back out with 11 seconds. Okay. And you can hear, you can hear this in this clip. Kyle Lowry knows that he has here and the ball's going here. So that's Siakam. Everybody still honors their man. Okay. Again, bounce pass. And this is what I'm talking about. Just, just watch Charlotte's passes. This is what you want to create with putting your hands up again. I think Toronto does the one of the best jobs in the NBA, regardless if they're in zone or man, or just putting their hands up and creating turnovers. Again, up the floor. They got it up the floor. They run a play. And a stand, you still got to guard the ball. You know, Bam is one of the best in the, in the league at playing in the middle of the floor. And again, you can see with this clip, at the end of this clip, oh. there we I'll fast forward a little bit. Watch Miami get out here after the rebound. Watch them really get their transition. I thought they were good in this in the, in the bubble. And here they go. They are out. They're getting the ball up the floor, getting their breaks, uh, getting their break going. Again, hands out always. Derek Jones, which is right here. Watch Derek Jones play the middle and watch Igadala, which is right here, also play the middle. Okay. And just watch these two guys this entire possession. Look at their hands covering the middle, covering all passing angles, supporting each other, just active hands and supporting each other to play, okay? Watch Bam right here in the middle. He's always gonna be touching somebody. Touch, there's a, the third guy he's touched in the possession. There he ba he's back there, but still spying the middle. Everybody else is matched up and hits a tough shot. Again, that's a low percentage shot. No direct line passes. Okay, I think this is one of this is a good situation. I talked about honoring the command. Watch these two guys right here. Malik Beasley and Wancho Herman Gomez. They're gonna play. He gets here, get out. You can see Malik tell him to get out. Now you have the corner, which happens a lot in the NBA. You're gonna have an overload side. I'll show you uh, some clips in the middle, how teams beat it. Again, and now Nas Reed passes, <laughs> passes uh, favors off. He sees a cutter, he's coming in. Josh is still behind it, but Nas is able to come up with a steal. Quick question. Yep. Which zone alignment would you teach first? Two, three zone. And a big reason is it helps you protect the paint. You address, you, you need somebody, the hardest part about a two, three zone is who addresses the ball. So you always kind of feel 
I'll just use this alignment right here. Okay, so we're in a two, we're in a two, three zone. D'Angelo has the ball. So JC is going to get back to this area, but your bottom line is up. Okay. Again, James Johnson needs to have a man. He can't just sit back here. So obviously he comes out and he's cleansing himself too. Jake Lehman, again, this is what I'm talking about being able, if you have a stunt, you can go from ball to ball. Jake just kind of half stunts at him here. James sees it. Now JC can recover. And now we can be aggressive. Zones cannot be a stop sign. You know, you be aggressive. Allow your players still to make some plays under your rules without gambling. Okay. Guys, obviously the same clip Scott Morrison used, but you know, I thought it was a good teaching clip. Okay. This is a couple things. Pick and roll coverages. Whatever Miami's in, there's Bam right there. He's probably going to be in a drop. <clears throat> Dragic, I think this is Dragic. He sees Gordon Haywood here. But just by putting your hands out active in the hands, you're going to get deflections and steals, and now you're going to be able to run again. That's the last time I'll say that Miami's really good. Now, this is where I think teams get in trouble a lot, okay? You can see Bridges is here, and Hollis Jefferson is here. Bridges is going to cut through, but who takes him? He just kind of lets the cutter go, which is going to lead to open shots. And it happens – there's a, 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 some teams do this. It's really mild. They just hit here. The bottom guy comes out and he drags them in. And now the corner fills them. I think in a zone, one of the biggest things that you have to do is don't be afraid to match up. And if your big has to get to the corner to match up, it's okay because at least he's not out here. Okay. He's not out here trying to guard somebody. Bigs can guard people in the corners. Again, now you're, you're asking OG to come all the way or to run the baseline and go. Here it is kind of again. The Pacers bring, just watch Doug McDermott. He starts here. And he should actually just went with the cutter because there's nobody for him to pass him off to. And that's how you're going to get an open three. If, if you want some good clips, it's it, it's funny. I think Tice is one of the best in the league, him and Bam, at running the middle of a zone. Just watch how many people he touches, moves, you know, and I'm just saying, I'm not saying that he's pushing them out of the way, but he just tells them enough that, hey, I see you on the cut. So here there's one, there's two, there's three. And he goes back to Zion, then he gets to box out favors. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Again, everyone has a man, and, and, and we're pretty big. You, you, you can watch Jake Lehman here. He just starts pointing. This is a rule for us in Minnesota. We're going to run zone, but we really want to, to, to stay with the man. There we pass that off. Now we can switch that. Now we pass him back. Just watch. See if I can get my circles going again. Just watch Nas Reed. This is J. This is J. C. Culver. This is Jared Culver, J. C. So they switch, switch, switch back, and Jalen gets a steal. Okay. Again, here it goes back to the corner. This is kind of the same clip I just sh sh showed. All Drew Holiday is just bringing it up. So he's taking the top man away. Now the bottom man has two. Now Tice just has to go out to the corner and guard a three-point shooter. Tice can guard him in, the, in there. Again, another simple way of it, for it to happen. Swing, swing, and you get an open three. Those are the kind of things you want to try to take away. Here we have it in a baseline. We talked about this against New Orleans. It happens. You can see James Johnson. He's going to, James Johnson's right here. James Johnson is right here. He's going to tell Josh to go here, and then James will go to the corner. And now we have bodies on bodies. 
and we're okay. Two quick questions come yep. here. First one, how would you practice going man in the zone and why? Say that again. Why would we go? How um, would you practice it? What well, is the question? How would you practice going man in the zone? And then, it, and then. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna lie. A big thing we do is we put six offensive players out there. Okay. It's a big. And I mean, if you if you have nine guys on your team, get two coaches out there and let them move around a little bit, and you really get your defense talking. For us, it's just a rule. I, I, it's not a rule. For, Excuse me for everybody. It's it's a it's a concept for us. You have to have a man, and we are conscious of the three point line, and that's one of the reasons why we have a man. If we were really trying to pack the paint, we would really care about having you know more people on the strong side, getting the ball to a side. I'll see if I in the next clip maybe might have it for us. Okay, now a lot of teams here will put three people on this side regardless. They'll have somebody on a ball, somebody here, and somebody here because they are going to pack the paint to prevent a zone. Now you might give up a flare on the weak side for a three. You know, things are going to happen. It, it's just what you – for us, why we say man-to-man -man is we really want to emphasize that, you know, the three-point line. Okay? And here's the other quick question. Yeah. Do you feel playing zone like the NBA is more beneficial in the long run because defenders have to be more active and cognizant of the people that are cutting through. No, uh, I, I don't. I don't think so. I think. I think deep, you just kind of change your pace a little bit. Um, no, I, I don't think so. Um, for me, again, I'm going to go back to it. <clears throat> One of the reasons why I personally like zone, um, being a head coach in the minor leagues, or just you know, we, we, there's times you play in an empty gym a little bit and it's just dead in the gym and, and you can feel your team not talking, it'll get them talking and get them moving around a little bit. Um, you can, you know, from a deep, this isn't a defensive, you know, presentation here on just man to man, but you know, you can also do that in a man to man situation. If you just want to switch or switch everything on ball, off ball, you'll really get your team talking as much as you can. Just, Hey, switch, switch, switch. We're here. We're here. And you start passing the opponent players off to each other. It's the same concept in, in man for me. Yeah. A answer the question. Yeah, I think so. So, you know, it's like, it, it's really more, it's less about, uh, you know, it, it's energy. I, 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 but energy what, it's, it's a curve ball. It's, yeah. it's situation. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's more tactical than let's say uh, it's more really team tactical than it is player uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of player, um, however you would say that is the team tactical part is. Yeah. I, I think when, you know, especially in the NBA where, you know, there's so many talented players, you can't give talented players the same dose of the same medicine all the time. They're going to, they're going to figure it out. You have to show them different looks, um, different situations. I mean, I just, I think that, you know, I, I think you just can't, play the same way all the time every time you know you just you, it's, there's there's too many smart people and, and talented players in the nba that you, you can't do it so here are just some clips again where I, I just think pick and roll coverage is pick and roll coverage i mean i just i think you, you trust your pick and roll coverage and you play in it you know in the nba that you know from a points per possession a, a floater on on you you know your starting center is a tough shot Okay. Um, again, Kelly Olenek is guarding the big. All right. They, I mean, you have a cutter here. Jay Crowder probably said something. So he picks the cutter up and we're, we're man on man. You know, I don't want to get critical. I mean, this is Jordan Clarkson, which, which can get hot. So he leaves a little bit, but they're man on man. I mean, he's coming right at him. Kelly Olenek's in a drop coverage and they get to play cover. I mean, I, I think it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Here we go again. Here's Toronto. Again, passing guys off. And Abaka's in a man-to-man. -man, I mean, he's in a man coverage. He's in a pick and roll coverage with the big and gets his hand on a basketball. Again, by just putting his hands out. Okay. The big thing I, I think you struggle, I, here's just, I think I have two, two of these clips. 
these are really good zone principles, hang time pass. I got ball, get them out, kick them back out. You get a close out, you're good. And now we start gambling and, and trying to reach for a basketball that we can't get. And we give up an open three. I think one of the, th one of the things that you really have to do throughout the zone is trust your principles. Here again is, is, is a gamble. Again, Charlotte does a great job. Another player that does a really good job in the middle is Cody Zeller. You can just watch Cody Zeller in this possession point out, hey, there's a cutter down there, drop. You know, he's, there's another cutter over there. He's communicating the whole time. And just by us trying to run through a passing lane to try to get a steal instead of an easy stunt to get back, now you leave an open three-point shooter. And more importantly, I just want to make this point, how much trouble he puts by going for this pass. I think this is Rozier right here. He's going to have to try to contest this, this pass over here because I think that's Malik Monk gambles. Gambles. And you're, you know, you have a 6'2 guy closing out to a 7'3 guy. So this is a part of the thing that that I mean it's maybe a little higher, higher part of it is um, I, I was in Sacramento before I came to Minnesota and, and we got pretty good at it. Toronto's good at it. And you can do this in, in a zone situation. I think these are a, a couple last clips here. It's called the go action. And one of the things that you want to do in my Miami does is they're going to load the paint. It's just, they're, they're going to get out. They're going to get all over the ball, be aggressive on the ball. And, but they're going to support each other. What we're watching here, and I'll rewind it after you watch it, is you're watching Iguodala, and I think this is none. Okay. You're watching these two guys. The ball is going to come out to Tatum, and he is going to drive the ball. Okay. And Iguodala is going to try to close out to him. And obviously Tatum, one of the elite scorers we have in our league, is going to drive the ball and Iguodala is going to get beat and none's going to pick him up. And then Iguodala is going to go right here to the corner. And I'll run this a couple of times and we call it go action. Okay. Okay. I'm going to let, just let it go. So here's the kick out. He gets beat. None picks him up and Iguodala goes to the corner. And I think when, you, when you're a team, you can teach this. Uh, we played it in man-to-man -man coverage in Sacramento at, at times. Just We were a smaller, you know, we had guys 6'3", six, 6'4", six, um, at, at the one, two, and three playing against, you know, six, seven guys that, you know, we would contest a shot, but we're not contesting it. So we'd get guys off the line understanding there was somebody else coming. I think one of the last clips I have from, from being a zone um, is another go action. It's, it's, I think it's going to be, here's one right here. They're, they're playing the middle. Abaka comes in and, and holds it. And he gets beat. OG gets beat right here. I'm going to try to turn up my volume. And mm. I want you to help me if you can hear it. No, it's, it's not going to play. But you can actually hear Kyle Lowry yelling, go, go, go. So Kyle Lowry stepping up to taking this. And OG that just got beat is going to go to Garrett Temple right here. And this is a part, if you want to load up your zone and get guys off the three-point line, you can do this. Again, you make Garrett Temple put the ball on the ground. And, and go. Okay. Last thing I have, and, and a lot of people say this, and I just, I want to make this point. Um, people will talk about zone as a stop sign. You be a you can be aggressive on the ball. Again, being aggressive without gambling, I think is a big part. Boston um, I, will run a zone at the end of games just to be aggressive. If, if it's tied or if they're up by a couple that the team calls a timeout, advances the ball, and, and is trying to win the game on the last second. They will do this. This is just at the end of halftime. And I've seen Boston do this for two years now where they are, you can see Tatum. Tatum is on the ball. Tatum is all over the ball and they get after people on this. They make this pass tough and they steal inbound plays. Okay, he got a tip there. I'm just going to let this run. 
Okay, here's it. Here's in the baseline steel. You know, kind of corner out of bounds. They can keep it in front. And Marcus Smart goes and gets this one. A zone cannot be a stop sign. Here it is again, baseline. Jalen Brown steals it. And I, I just think it's a, it's a big part of your zone, which, you know, everybody wants to talk about zone or stop signs. I, I don't think it's a stop sign. I think it's a, hey, you can get after me a little bit. And, um, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going trying to go back to my, sharing my, my screen here. There you go. Okay. Again, change in tempo, slow them down a little bit, get your team to communicate. You know, bad defenders. Um, you know, Scott Morrison talked about that a little bit. You know, maybe Miami tried to hide a couple guys, but you know, again, I, I thought Miami did did a big part where it got their transition going. You know, it, if if you just have bad matchups, if the teams you want to stay small or you want to stay big, and the other team is is uh, is is not complying with you, or, or you can't beat them on it right now, and, and you still, you know want to believe in the lineup you're doing, you, you can always go zone. Okay. Um, if you're getting beat at the three point in, in the paint or the three point line, I, I think you have to draw a line. Sometimes it's, it's tough to really cover both. Um, and then to change a play, you know, a lot of teams will love to go eight um, out of a timeout. They love to jump in their zone. Okay. Um, again, I, I can take some questions. If there's any more questions, if I need to run back a video uh, again, please use this. Um, I emailed this document to Chris Oliver. Um, if you want it, or you can email it to me, um, you know, take, take a screenshot or take a picture of the screen and, and I can email you this document if, if you'd like it. But, um, you know, so we, we, have, uh, we have a question. Yep. How do you teach zone uh, in out of bounds situations? Um, a big part is I think if you want to, um, depending on, can you see my screen? Yes. Um, and, and so now it's the Boston dead ball. Yeah. This, so this is an out of bounds situation. Okay. See what they have right here is they're up and Marcus smart is, is to be honest with you, he he's part of it. Um, <laughs> Scott Morrison kept, kept saying, if you want a zone buster, have LeBron James. Well, there's only one LeBron James. So I'm going to disagree with Scott on that part because he's pretty good, but Marcus smart's pretty good in this. He, he will talk and communicate. You can just see where he's going. He told everybody where to go and found the last guy and then baited, baited the pass. But again, don't ever be afraid, you know, to have ball pressure on the ball. You know, as, as, uh, as, as much as I was rooting for Toronto and my friend Nick Nurse, um, the, the pass that that Kyle Lowry made when Taco Fall in the playoffs was guarding him. Uh, Kyle Lowry got to stand almost off the court because there was no fan, you know, there was no bench or fans in, in the play. But still, Kyle made a heck of a play, and Taco falls up and put ball pressure on there, and you can really get aggressive. I mean, this guy's open, okay? That guy's probably open for the lob right here, but there's no way that he can see him. So ball pressure is the first one. Okay, and see what they do here. You know, they, they do this baseline out of bounds a lot. That one was, was a sideline, but they get these a lot. All right, you can read. Again, look at Marcus Smart again. He's pretty good at it. He's just standing there reading, being a defensive back for this. Understanding that if you have ball pressure, he's got to throw it at some point and you can go get it. Again, no direct line passes will help you with it. Okay. Here's the last one. And again, I think they just take it all, they take everything away here and make them throw it over the top, which a lot of zone people do. And Jalen Brown makes a heck of a play to, to get up there. So ball pressure, to answer your question, ball pressure. And you know, if, if you can create a hang time pass, you can probably bait them into something. Another question here is, what do you mean by stop sign? Um, I think Scott, uh, Scott Morrison talked about it. What you want, the first thing you want in a zone, okay, 
is you want this. And, and Scott talked about it. Okay. You have nowhere to go. Charlotte's not in anything. And so it's a stop sign. They just threw the ball out. Like, hey, no, we're stopping. We're going to reset. And I think he gave the analytics. And this is a stop sign. You got the ball up here with 11 seconds to go on the shot clock. And you, are, you have allowed the defense to get set. That is a stop sign. Got it. Yeah, very well uh, done. Let's see, we got another question here. Uh, so Celtics start in man during out of bounds or do they go two, three? They start in two, three. And end of game dead balls, which is out of bounds also. They're really good at it. And again, what they do, um, for all the computer people out there, we are learning how to do huddle. So hmm. I'm, still, I'm still learning how to do huddle. Okay. What they do is they have their big guys on the bottom and their smaller guys up top. They have their big guys up on the bottom and they have their small guys up top. And again, you know, I, I think I, I talked about that is if you can, if you can keep your bigs at the rim and even match up on a, on a 14 second shot clock, uh, there's five seconds on the shot clock. This is 19 and he steals it. But if they get the ball in bounds and they run some kind of play and you have to match up with six seconds on the shot clock, you know, you, you're, you know, your points per possession is way down and you have, you still have your bigs at the, at the, at the rim to protect the rim and you have your guards on the perimeter. And if you have to switch, you have to switch and play from there, you know, encouraging a tough contested shot. You know, it's interesting if you hold that clip there, you see, you know, you see the high hands, you know, with uh, trying to get the, you know, effect in the passing angle. And you see here, in the, you know, on the side, uh, already communication, right? You see the yeah. um, down there. So it's just amazing how, how connected in, in many ways they are as a, you know, as a defense and, uh, and, and so many of the, so many of the points that, that you made are being incorporated into, into this right here, right into this clip. Yep. Um, a question here during wheel with the defender following the wheel action, even though they match up man, does that mean they're still in the zone? So uh, I guess the passing of, no, the I, I think, I think, I think, I mean, I, I just, since I have this, I guess I stopped sharing here. Yeah, I mean, I, I can just say it. That when you when you when you are in a zone and you're in an area, I think once you leave that area to go with the cutter, you need to be in man. You just y'all match up. You, you, it's easy to find a man. We've done it. Our, you know, we've done it our whole lives playing. Hey, I, I got you. I got you. I got you. We're fine. Again, I don't want to make this too confusing, especially in a zone. Like I think the more rules you put on it, you know the the more excuses that get put in, you know, a little bit. The first thing you have to communicate, you know, you guard the ball and communicate and honor the honor the command, honor the communication call. I think I think you're in a good space. You're in a good space. And if you're uncomfortable at any point, just the old man. The, the, everybody can find a man. Awesome, awesome. So, any last questions for Coach before I let him uh, go and play his own there with his. Uh, Three nine-year-olds. Uh, last uh, last opportunity. Uh, this was great. Uh, you know, fantastic stuff. A wealth of information, and uh, and you have the way to connect with coach and continue building on this, which uh, you know it's just tremendous. So, um, like I said, really really great stuff. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, for joining. And uh, we will get set up and ready to go is in 25 minutes. We'll tip it off again. Uh, so thank you so much, Coach Gates. Wish you the, the best of success and look forward to connecting again soon.
Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.